Hi kids, uh, we are going to do lesson 19 today and the objective for this one is going to be kind of familiar and yet a little bit new. We're going to be converting measures involving whole numbers and solving multi-step word problems. So there's a little warm-up activity in the teacher's book. It's super good for you guys. It's just recognizing if you have whole numbers and you multiply, you get like 4 times 2 is 8. But if it's 4 times 2 tenths, the answer is 8 tenths. 4 tenths times 2 tenths is 8 hundredths and so on. That's all that is there. But today's content really is about converting. So just to remind you of the place where the magic happens, it's right in here. So you're going to take um, the measurements this time are going to go from smaller units to larger units. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if I have 30 centimeters and I'm using a meter stick, which you guys probably don't even know what that is, but I have a meter stick here. And so a meter stick has all these centimeters on it. And then it has all the way across to 100 100 centimeters and so what we're doing is we're taking an amount like 30 centimeters and converting it to meters so if I have 30 centimeters that's only a tiny fraction of this whole big meter stick so what you may end up with today are fractional units for your answers okay sorry I'm on this one fractional units for your answers you do need to know uh, the conversions and I believe I told you on a previous video to mark page 167 in your learn book and that is lesson 8 reference sheet uh, it's in module 4 lesson 8 reference sheet on page 167 and it's going to have some conversions uh, that you can kind of look at to help you with coming up with what the one is because you guys have to come up with well I need one of the old and the equivalent of the new so if I have something like 30 centimeters and I need to convert that to meters, same amount, you follow the formula I gave you on the other video. So it's copy the first amount, okay? And so that's 30 times one unit of the old, and then copy this down 30 times the equivalent of the new unit. So right here is where the change is happening from one of the old to the equivalent of the new. Now that we can multiply by fractions, you're going to set it up with the numerators 30 times one over the 100 on the bottom. And now you just proceed 30 over 100 and simplify as you're able. So this one has, you can divide by 10 because it has the extra zeros and then you get 3 tenths. And then you can convert that to decimal form if requested. Uh, another sample problem, 9 inches equals how many feet? Again, when you get on a test or when you get on your own and they're not going to say, this lesson is changing everything from smaller to larger units, you're going to have to pay attention on your own. And it's like, am I going from inches, which are little tiny, they're about as long as my thumb here, okay, the tip of my thumb, to feet, which, you know, a ruler, like, I can't even get that on the screen, but like 12 inches. So if I only have nine inches, that's less than a foot. So it makes sense that my answer is not even gonna be one. So think logically about what type of answer you're getting. And again, copy nine times one of the old, nine times the equivalent of the new. Okay, so one inch equals one twelfth of a foot. So instead of multiplying by whole numbers like we did last time, we're multiplying by fractions. Okay? There are more sample problems. Um, I have one on top of here. This Don't look at lesson 20 yet. It's a surprise. Um, 15 inches equals how many feet? And of course, 15 inches. Now you should know that that is longer than a foot, but times one of the old times still the equivalent of the new, one twelfth uh, of a foot. And then 15 twelfths is equal to 1 and 3 twelfths. Then I would simplify by dividing 3 twelfths by 3 and get 1 and 1 fourth foot. Okay? So I also have a couple more examples, things that might be helpful. This is from a different notebook because, of course, I have a whole bunch. And I had put, it, this might help you, 
cups, pints, quarts, gallons. And so one cup is our small unit, and then one cup is equal to two pints. And two pints are equal to one quart, but that also would have four cups. And then this is a gallon, and it probably isn't labeled, but there you go, gallon. And it has four quarts in it, and since each quart has four cups, it's four times four is 16 cups, and divide that in half, it has eight pints. So uh, that's just a little helping tool. And then I even had more, but I don't wanna take up too much time with this. Uh, 30 centimeters equals how many meters? And again, we're going from smaller units to larger units. You have to know that 100 centimeters equals a meter. That's gonna be on that other page that I just referred to. And set it up, the equivalent times one uh, right here. Here it is again, times one of the old and then the equivalent of the new. Okay, so uh, there it is. Let's get into the lesson so I don't end up doing notes for the whole thing. All right, here we are. Hopefully that will focus. Convert. Express your answer as a mixed number like that other sample problem. If possible, the first one is done for you. Um, two feet equals two-thirds of a yard. If you take this first amount, remember copy, 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 times one of the old and then the equivalent of the new. So one foot is one third of a yard. Okay, so that's where you're getting that. And then you set it up two times one over three, which would give you two thirds. So let's get to it. Oh, that's funny. And some, you know what I've noticed? Um, oh, I'm, um, I, I have different things, but my students were telling me that on one of the lessons I did recently, there was a problem in the book that didn't exactly match. It was just the one that was different and it was right in this location. Um, but you have to do what's in your book. You can't just copy what's on mine. Mine sometimes, like, I think this is an old book. So I just picked it up and it's probably not the most current edition. So sometimes I have to scramble for getting uh, extra supplies that I can write in. Anyway, okay. Four feet equals how many yards? So copy, copy, times one of the old, and then one foot is equal to how many yards? Well, it's one out of three. You should know that three feet equal a yard. If you don't, just try to memorize it. And that's going to, they don't really give us much room here, but you can do four times one over three if you wanna see that it's gonna be four thirds. And then just write your four thirds, but of course, write it as a mixed number. Don't leave it as an improper fraction. And then you get one and one third yard. Okay, so pretty easy peasy once we get into this. Seven inches equals how many feet? So we're gonna, uh, you don't bother writing it on the other side. We already know that's what we're trying to get to. Seven inches equals seven times one inch. Probably don't need this label here. Sorry, sometimes I write too much. And now it's the equivalent. And so we're going to look at the new. So one inch is one twelfth of a foot. And that's our equivalent amount. Seven times one over 12. Seven twelfths of a foot. Seven inches equals seven twelfths of a foot. I hope that makes sense for you. 13 inches equals how many feet? Now, if you know that 12 inches are in a foot, then you're thinking, oh, it's just over one foot. And I would say, yay, you're right. So 13 times one inch, and then one inch is one twelfth of a foot. That's kind of bad there. And then 13 times one over 12, and then 13 twelfths, but we don't wanna leave it like that. So we get one and one twelfth feet. Nice, yes. And then let's move this up. I know we have a big fat book here that I have to press down. Five ounces equals how many pounds? You have to know ounces to pounds conversion. Again, use the reference page, whatever it was, 167, I think. Five times one ounce. And then 
ounces and pounds, it's 16 ounces to a pound. So one ounce is one sixteenth of a pound. So that's our new unit. Five times one over 16. Five sixteenths of a pound. Five ounces is five sixteenths of a pound. And the last one on this page, 18 times one ounce equals 18, again, ounces to pounds. If, one, if it's only one ounce, it's one sixteenth of a pound. 18 times one over 16, which gives us 18 sixteenths, which is an improper fraction. So you get one and two sixteenths if you do the actual difference there. 16 goes into 18 one time with two left over, but you can simplify that by dividing both of these by two and get one and one eighth pound. And that's your simplest form mixed number answer. Already done with the first page. All right, Regina buys 24 inches of trim for a craft project. What fraction of a yard does Regina buy? So we're taking inches to a yard. So 24, let's write this out. Inches equals how many blank yards? And we can just copy that inches, 24 times one inch. And then, now this is a different unit. So previously we were using feet. But a yard is a whole big long stick, and hopefully you know that there are three feet in a yard. And if you know that there are three feet in a yard, then there are three of the twelves. So it's one thirty-sixth of a yard. One inch is one thirty-sixth of a yard. There are thirty-six inches in one yard, so that's why we have this fraction. Now that gives us twenty-four times one over 36. We're out of room, so go up here. 24 36 I hope you're saying, gosh, those look like multiples of a special number I know. Yes, they are. They're multiples of 12. You could start, if you didn't know that, you could start with two and divide both by two and then see what happens. Oh, there went the light. See? Oh, the lights went out. When the light go down it's time for journey in the city okay and so when we divide we've got and the sun shines on the bay sorry i'm totally distracted with the song two-thirds of a yard is your final answer there you go um and so then we can make a little tape diagram to help us with this, but if a whole yard of trim costs six dollars how much did regina pay okay so she needs uh two-thirds of a yard. She only bought 24 inches. So how much did she pay? So if you take the whole and you call it a whole yard is six dollars, but she only needed um, two-thirds of that because she's got 24 inches. So she needed that much. Then it's like saying two-thirds of six. So we can use this. Uh, you can do six divided by three and that's for one unit and then have multiply by two to get two units. Remember when we did that over here? Uh, it does not matter how you do it. Two times six over three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify and I'm going to get four dollars. She paid four dollars for the trim. Okay. There you go. Always try to circle your answers so that I can find them when I am looking. At Yo Yo Yogurt. Yo, what up? The scale says that Sarah has eight ounces of vanilla yogurt in her cup. Mm, I'm kind of hungry. Her father's yogurt weighs 11 ounces. How many pounds of frozen yogurt did they buy all together? So we need to put those together. But then express your answer as a mixed number. Of course, of course we will. So first things first, let's add up her eight ounces, OZ, and 11 ounces, OZ, and we get our total ounces. 
19 ounces. So this is the amount that we're going to convert to pounds because we need to show the answer in pounds. 19 ounces equals how many LBs? And we have 19 times 1 ounce. And how much is 1 ounce of a pound? Hopefully you remember from the previous uh, side. It's 1 16th of a ob. That's what I used to say. One ob. 19 sixteenths. Oh, I think I skipped that step. Oh, well, this is where we're going. 19 sixteenths, and then write it as a mixed number. 16 goes in and 19 one whole time with 3 sixteenths left over. And 16 is not divisible by 3 because 15 is divisible by 3. So you should recognize uh, that I can't simplify. That is the total amount of frozen yogurt they bought. One and three sixteenths pounds of fro-yo. Fro-yo. Yum. I have not had frozen yogurt in weeks. Weeks, I'm telling you. Okay. Feng Zhu drinks one cup of milk every day for lunch. How many gallons? You know what? That's why I did not break my wrist. See? It's getting better. It's looking really good. And I didn't break it because my bones are strong. I had an x-ray and they were like... Nope, your wrist looks good. I'm like, it's so ugly, but it is really colorful. Um, anyway, drink your milk. It will make your bones strong. I'm not lying. This is so serious. Like, drink milk. I looked at my x-ray, and I was like, wow, I have great bones. Okay. Anyway, Feng Zhu, drink in the milk. Good job. How many gallons of milk does he drink in two weeks? Sorry, I, sometimes I digress. We're going to change this to gallons. So every day... Now, we're not doing school weeks. We're doing regular weeks. So there are seven days in a week times two weeks. Two weeks. Fourteen days. Okay. So um, that means 14 cups. And that's without refills. But we're just going to go with the basics. So 14 cups equals how many gallons? And it's 14 times one cup. And... 14. You know, it really does start kind of hurt a little bit. Uh, remember from the graphic that I showed you in the notes with all the 16? 1 16th of a gallon. 1 cup is 1 16th. Go back to the notes so you can see the little picture or make it again. 14 16ths, because it's 14 times 1 over 16, you get 14 16ths. And so uh, not quite a whole gallon but 14 sixteenths of a gallon, and those are both even, and so you can divide by two, and 14 divided by two is seven, and 16 divided by two is eight, so seven eighths of a gallon. Yay, become a subscriber and be entertained every day. <laughs> Almost every day. See you on the next video.